All right, all right. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today is 23rd of April 2015, and I just started channeling recently within two weeks. And it's very nice that everybody joined us. So, hi, um, we have Casey, Gurudan, Liliana, Maria, Matt, Kasim, Rox, then another Roxy, Rox. And Wendy, hello everybody. Um, so my channeling is a bit different. I'm I'm just a beginner, and the information comes to me mostly first to me. Uh, the energy comes. I feel the presence, and then I have the ideas coming through. But I have to put the these ideas into words. So I'm present and I'm pronouncing things. But the personality that comes through is uh, is someone else. And uh, when um, Grindel, the reptilian, came, our friend, it was clearly it was me making it up because I it was very unexpected. He came through, and I felt my face changing into his smile and. It's quite strange sensation, and my body started moving in a very strange way. So, so that was for me a confirmation that something is is, is really happening. But, but in general, I don't have a I cannot tell the difference between me speaking and them speaking, or I cannot tell the difference between me making things up and them downloading things. But I feel very inspired. That's very inspirational what happens. And the energy comes, clearly the energy comes through. So I hope as I do more and as the questions are become as the questions become more important, I hope that the download becomes more like into other channelers, it becomes more transparent. So they would speak through my voice. I, I will let them do that. Right now, if I don't speak, they, they don't seem to be speaking. I give them time. Uh, an advice was given by them to me to take pauses and speak slowly so I get the downloads. Interestingly, after the conversation later, when I wash the dishes and do repetitive work, when my mind is free, I get more downloads. So if, answer, if there is a question from you, first I get the download, I give you the answer, but then later I give more downloads and I give more, get more answers. That is. Very very interesting. I and I enjoy that. So today I got a few downloads, which was answers to yesterday's question. So if you ask them again, I will give you more. And how to find us? Uh, humancolony.org. Uh, get in touch with us. To be in this room, in these boxes down below, you have to go uh, contact us through Google Hangouts. Any of us, we are on the same Google chat. So you have to be invited. So. Get in touch with me or any others, and through humancolony.org, and then um, we will include you. So, write to me by email, mikesteinberg2 at gmail.com, or through humancolony.org you can do. Also, find us on internet by searching for Hugh Colo, which is abbreviated Human Colony. Hugh H U C O L O. It's a unique keyword which lets you find. Uh, today. Um, I want to invite first my new alien friend Rojo. Rojo, uh, he and she is the same thing. It's a male and female at the same time, and uh, she is uh, a Yael in the ship uh, circling the Earth. And I like her energy, so it's it's a pleasure to channel her. And then, if you want, we can tr try to bring Grindel as well. I invite you now to uh, bring some topics, so 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 there is more energy when they come. They they um, they could uh, address first the topics. Any, any topics you want to bring up first before I go? I do have one. I would like to know uh, maybe a little bit about Antarctica. I was hearing something about those. Um, just a little information about Antarctica. That's that's what I was in interested about today. All right. Anything else? Well, I have a personal question if I could ask. Okay. I want to know more about my daughter and why she doesn't want us to come to Florida. Ah. We're going to Florida. Yeah, I want to go to Florida and see her again. 
Uh huh. I think it's more the husband than the daughter. Uh huh. So that's Casey, you wanted to say something? Oh, I was just going to say I would like to talk about crystal grids if that's possible. Uh huh. And wands. We were just talking about extension, using an extension of the body. So crystal grids and crystal wands. Uh huh. Any, anyone else? If you do speak to the Yael, it would be I'd be interested in knowing um, what type of work is going on right now as far as the the planet is concerned. Because I know that I work with we work together, all of us with them as far as regulating planetary weather and so forth. So I'm just curious to see what is happening right now with respect to our weather. I see. Anything else? You can ask during the conversation. I think I got enough, but if anybody wants to pronounce something right away, I can, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you please coordinate uh, as, as you go because, um, you know, um, it, uh, in the chat you can take turns, I guess, but when there's many people, you can take turns. Uh, who wants to take controls? Uh, I can give controls to someone because I... If if I get if I have to press any buttons, I will have to get out of um, uh, state. Anybody? Um, I'll I'll take them if no one will. Yeah, I don't know how to do. I'd rather not though, because I'm working. I might have to step out actually. Oh, uh, okay. I don't, know what to, I don't know how to do it. Ah. I'll do it. Whose voice was the last? <laughs> I didn't see whose voice was the last. Say again, who, who volunteers? Give me your name because I can't see. Say again. Casey. Oh, Casey, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And someone else wanted. Dan. Dan's got the voice. Dan? Hmm, I don't see Dan here. Oh, here. Go ahead. Ash. No, go ahead. On the right. On the right. I think. Yeah. Dan would be so good. So you have to press on uh, that. Uh, on the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventh box is, is called control room. So if uh, somebody makes terrible noises, you just mute them temporarily. I guess that's okay. most. Yeah, that's what you do. Okay. Uh, and uh, sometimes we have um, a troll coming and you know just uh, making noises, so you have to kind of eject him. Okay. But I I didn't invite him today, so hopefully he won't come. Okay. I don't see Dan in the list. I guess it goes down below that screen. So I can, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's it. All right, technical things over. <clears throat> Next time I should do it first and then, oh, here then. A guru then. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Hello, Rojo here. I am Yael, and I'm new to channeling. I am male and female in the same body, and I'm in a ship circling the Earth. I cannot give you any specific updates. That information doesn't go easily. Through Max, there is more <sighs> noise in the system. So when we give specifics, it doesn't go through; it goes through distorted. But ideas and answers to your problems come much easier. 
in general. So if something is badly needed, that comes pretty easy. The answers and ideas. I'm partly here. It's still largely Max speaking, but I enjoy your company and enjoy partial presence here. Uh, how is everybody today? Woo! Very well. How are you? Uh, well, welcome. I'm pretty good. The troubles you have bring my energy a little down, but I stay focused on my interest and excitement, so it doesn't bring me as much down. Yes, the weather. The Earth is going into new stages of development. It is largely up to your human collective. Down on the surface and in other dimensions, the spiritual collective mind to decide how to play this game in this timeline or in this set of timelines. So we give advice, we give our offers of help, but it is up to you humans, you as a collective consciousness to decide how to play this game. You are vortexes, crystalline vortexes. The energy of the source comes through a series of energy bodies into you and leaves back through same series of energy bodies. So it is back and forth exchange. It flows through. It flows from up to down, from down to up, from front to back, through the heart, from back to front. It's always a spiral, double spiral, in, out. It's like blood coming into your head and out of your head, into your br into brain, into your hand and back. Same is as blood, same is the energy coming back and forth. And it also goes to your earth, earth, from the earth and back to the earth. So you are made from earth. You are, your atoms have a signature of earth. Your genome has a signature of the earth because you evolved here. You are made partly from alien, genes and partly from earth animal genes because you have to live on that planet. You are designed to live on that planet. So it's up to you to collectively ascend with the planet. And of course time is the essence in this experiment. In this it's not even an experiment anymore. It is a project. Time is an answer, is an essence in this project. And you seem to be running out of time. But again, it's your collective choice. Your creators, your gods, your hmm, how do what do you call them? Your higher level spiritual guardians, collective guardians, could make miracles. So if the system is facing destruction, they can stretch time or reverse few processes. But that would be an extreme measure. They would first exhaust all the possibilities of you fixing the problem. Then they would exhaust all the possibilities of us helpers fixing the problems. And then if nothing happens, nothing happens, if nothing happens, if angels cannot help, then a higher intervention could be possible to save the timeline. But again, that would be the extreme. So hopefully things will develop in time and the system will evolve in time. 
as you know, the geological plane, they accumulate the stress and they wish to move. And sometimes it's helpful, it is helpful for them to move a little bit instead of accumulating more stress and moving farther at once. It's better to have little seismic disasters following one another than one big one. It's, it's rather obvious. So your system evolves and it's up to your human collective to decide in which way you want to evolve. I hope it helps. Unfortunately, specific details for today I cannot give, but I can give you a larger perspective. Now, I spoke so much and I wish you to speak. Thank you for that perspective. I really appreciate that. Yes, thank you. Give me your names and go with your questions. The, the, burner, the more burning questions, the better. I have a question. You mentioned something about our energy. Can you explain a little bit about how our energy affects your energy? Oh. Your meaning... Personal? Me meaning us as a collective, um, I believe you mentioned that our vibration sometimes affects your vibration and I was curious if you could elaborate on that a little bit about how our vibration affects the vibration of others in the universe or those who are, or those observing us. Uh, and who is speaking? What is your name? My name is Wendy. And, um, hi, Wendy. Hi. I'm not sure if we know one another. I do believe that I have um, some very strong Yael connections. Actually, I know I do. Um, so I don't know if we've met. So I would like to offer to meet meet you in some realm, if possible. Or I would, love to. I would love to. Yes. Hi, Anne. Uh, hi, hi, Wendy. Ah, give me a favorite color. Uh, deep purple. Oh, so is mine. <laughs> so here is the connection already. Really? Yes. Uh, let's connect more. Okay. How is collective human energy affecting mm, collective Yael? Yes. Mm, let me download it. Upload, download, through load, in load. Yes. Hmm. It's not simplistic. It is more karmic. It's more karmic. We, if, if you know the story of the Greys, it's a tragic story, story when the race faced complete extinction and degraded in many ways and had to redesign it mm -hmm. through technology. And it, the grace became so degraded in their ways that they had to seek for original human forms and mix with them. And that's how they made us. Mm -hmm. so we were salvation, a way of saving their race by mixing with you humans and some other races like Pleiadians and such. So we thank you for giving us uh, your genome and co-creating us. It was in part a collective human decision. So we are karmically linked. And as you develop through the thousands of years, we have been here, we have been watching and working with you and injecting our new genes into you. So it's a long story. 
the Jews carry more of our genes. That was another project. And if you might know that the sensation of panic, of complete disaster, still carries in our DNA from the time of the grace facing and surviving that disaster. So that sense of panic is within us very deep. We use it creatively, but that is the key of our essence. We don't want to repeat the destruction of a race. So that's how our energy, the primal connection of our energy to yours is to say we are nurturing, we're creating new races and we hate to see any death, any destruction, anything which is opposite to creative. That's how we, so we are panicking right now, <laughs> collectively, but we, we, we are used to live that, with that sense of panic. We can work under stress and we do work hard to help you. But again, it is your collective choice, so our hands are bound. We can do only as much as it is permitted by your collective and by joint agreements of many energies. Does it help? Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. That was a very, very thorough answer. Thank you. Yeah, I want to help you with your daily things. What is your interests of today? Come, come up. Uh, you pronounce some, but vocalize them in any order as you as you feel appropriate. Yeah, this is Roxy here. Oh, Roxy, Roxy, Rox, yes. And just a second. Please continue. Yes, I have a question about my daughter and her husband. Yes. They don't want us to come to Florida because they got to go to court over their house. And uh, I said, we're going, in, not about the house, we're just coming for vacation. Uh-huh. And I feel it's more the husband than, the, than my daughter. Okay, uh, did you say something like court order? Court order. Yeah, they got to go to court over their house. What does it mean? I I sense I could understand. I just need an explanation. He hasn't paid on his house because yes. uh, because of a um, long story. He rented it out. No one. They stiffed him on money. But that's not why they're going to court. They're going to court because he hasn't paid his mortgage. Mm -hmm. But they did a what they call, I don't know what it means. Someone else may can tell me. They did a Roku, Roku. In other words, the Internet signed the papers instead of a human signing the papers. Okay. When he bought the house. I think this is a very human affair, which... I uh, grasp only partly. Um, I invite someone with experience with these affairs to speak up and just give their perspective. Someone else uh, who has experience with this affair just help to understand more what is happening. I can give you my perspective after I understand. Yeah, they just don't want us to come to Florida right now. They say it's you know. Yeah, thank you, Rox. Here. I'm inviting someone else just to give their perspective to help you. And then I will speak. Wendy? Casey? Tyler? Yeah, I mean, what's so, so I mean, what does it matter? I mean, it, are you going to go see them? I mean, this is obviously a, a lot more complex than what you're saying. Yeah, we're going to go see We don't stay with them, we stay in a hotel. Right. I mean, so I it just sounds like a deal. 
Well, I think the question really is, is one, what, what is the pressing need to visit them? And what, um, if, is there a reason why you, keep, why you prefer not to accept their idea of not visiting right now? We only see them four times a year, or three times a year. And we only see them for two days, uh, two, two and a half days. So you miss them. You want to see them. They're your family. Yeah. And you just want to see them. Yeah, we live in Georgia. They live in Florida. 10, 11, 11 hours away. Do you feel that there's something going on that doesn't meet the eye that you're concerned that that's why they don't want you to come visit? I feel the husband is the one that doesn't want us to come visit. But you, do but you have any idea why? He said they will be too busy worrying about their house. You know, if the court lets them keep the house or not keep the house. My humble opinion is, is that he is, for whatever reason, feeling less than who he knows he truly is inside and is unable to face you because he doesn't feel that he's being all that he can be and doesn't really want that to be reflected back to him that he's not the person that he wants to be. That's just an observation. Okay. And I wouldn't necessarily take it personally that it's something that they don't want you there. I think it's that because they're so uncomfortable about their situation, they feel not self-empowered and that's difficult to face with your parents, you know? Yeah. But I already see myself in Florida with them, so I don't know what to, you know, deal with. I guess that would be my best um, suggestion is to visualize the outcome and, and trust in your heart that what you're seeing and you're seeing yourself in Florida with them is to visualize the outcome and, and allow to navigate toward that desired outcome and just let it go and, and let yourself you know flow in that direction and maybe you're causing a little bit of more resistance for yourself Be, you're pushing away the visit because you're wanting it so bad you're pushing it away like we all do with things that we desire our very desire to push it away because we don't allow it okay Did that help, Rojo? Oh. Oh, thank you, Rox. Thank you, Wendy. I now understand a bit more. Yes, in our culture, we respect the personal space of others very much. So if someone doesn't want us, we wouldn't force it now. But yes, you understand, understand, yes. You want to give, and it's hard when they don't take. It's really hard. Yes. Um, it seems like your communication by other means is not working well. Do you communicate by phone and video Skype, any of that? We phone her Skype. She can't get on the com on her computer right now. Yes, so phone is working for you. You speak to her, so you understand things? Yeah, we speak. Is it a full communication or is it um, uh, partial where things are not pronounced? She, uh, I think it's more partial sometimes. She doesn't want to really state her opinion as much as I think she wants to. And you hope that as you come, you will see more and help more. Yes. I understand. Yes, it's really hard to help when someone doesn't 
accept, formally accept the help. Here is a great illustration. Uh, we are here on the orbit, the whole race, the whole universe says, humans, take our help. And the humans individually and collectively on the surface and collectively in spiritual level say, no, we are fine. We'll manage. <laughs> Yeah. And they are facing imminent disaster, right? And you want to help. You see the analogy. It's, I am you, and I'm sitting here channeling instead of going down and helping for real. Right. Yes, they are in the same predicament. Thank you for that illustration. I hope I will, could help you more, but my best help is by example. I send you my love, but I cannot come at the moment because we are not invited yet. Thank you. Let's move on and if you bring it up next time you might have a better perspective. Unless somebody has a better idea. I, I mean there is many inventive ideas here but I, I think I'm done with that. Anybody? I think the only thing I would add to that though for you to make you feel a little bit better about the situation is to a lot of son-in-laws have a hard time it, showing the parents of their spouses that they're not cared for in the way that maybe their parents feel that they should be. So maybe he feels that he doesn't want you to feel as though he's not caring for his your daughter in the way he knows she deserves and he doesn't and he feels a little shameful about that so maybe that's what he, why he doesn't want you to come and visit yes thank you you're welcome yeah I would I'll try to be more flexible I would try that would be my I would say personal advice be more flexible and your mantra, I give you a mantra. I give you a mantra. Listen carefully. Okay. Whatever. I love you anyway. I like that. That was good. Yes. Yes. All right, let's move on. There was more questions, and uh, the time is <laughs> your Earth time is running out. Please. We had a question about crystal grids. Yes, yes. That's the way I wanted to hear that. Casey, would you like uh, to shoot that? Yes. Oh, I'm here. I just wanted to ask a question to regarding to the environment. Is there any crystal grid ideas or setups you could give us or crystals we could use to maybe help heal our environment and our earth individually, even though collectively we haven't made these steps yet? Oh, there is so many ways, so many ways. I will share only two. Maybe a couple from, for the starters. They're the most effective. That could be most effective to the, our planet right now. You see, the most effective for everyone is different. I will share with you something most effective for a very personal approach to Crystal Grid. Okay. Go to your favorite water place. Uh, a lake, a river, a creek, uh, I guess in Pennsylvania you don't have much of the ocean. And uh, collect some and just keep walking. It's a uh, work of your legs and your eyes and keep dancing on the board of the water and three phases, the water, the ground and the air, three phases meeting together and the waves going and look for stones which attract you, which look, which feel very good and when you take them, talk to them and see if you like them, if they are good for you. Collect those stones, give them personalities and assign them to mm, chakras. 
human chakras and place them as human chakras are and you can place them anywhere you can just put them on a little piece of fabric pretty fabric or you can glue them somehow kindly with just white glue white school glue or something of that sort or any way you like organize them in the order of chakras they don't have to be exact color just the names and your relationship and use them for healing yourself and because they are from earth this way you connect to earth so you heal yourself and you send your energy to them and heal earth the same way that's one way I think you you might know the name for that tool I I don't know the name but that is a very standard usual practice among light workers building chakra grids and another one is similar but you might place these stones just hide them somewhere gently hide them around your favorite places so the places you visit you carry the stone you build a relationship and then plant it where you want it to be in nice place where it is undisturbed so you build a relationship and then spread them around the area where you connect to earth most the favorite areas and then you talk to them and when you meet these places you talk to them and visit the stones you don't have to find it but you know it's there so you, so you connect to these places and that's how you connect to your earth it's very ground in practice so it's not something ethereal it's something very tangible where you build your personal relationship to your personal places of, of favor of favor and of course finding your favorite vortices vortexes in the area is is fun mm. these usually are near churches churches are built around vortexes also city monuments and city mm, Vietnam veteran memorials are very often build around vortexes they when they build they knew what they're doing and they usually have a flag stock how do you call it flag bar uh, right in the center of the vortex so visit those use them they are already there you don't have to discover new ones they are already there and of course there are geomagnetic maps of vortexes so you can visit and stand in the center of the vortex uh, given a very simple prayer very simple formula uh, sending to the earth your love and your wishes in for healthy transformation healthy transformation because it is to it is to transform so you wish that transformation to be healthy and Mm. and easy yes thank you thank you that was an awesome answer beautiful so can you also would you like to comment on using uh, tools such as staffs and wands for extensions of projecting energy and things like that same thing yes um, dancing with this stuff is great especially under drumming sounds find on YouTube there is a new sound which recently came to earth this instrument has been invented in 2002 and it became very popular among you with uh, as chimes of telephones and as a signature of Nintendo games. It's called hang drum. Hang because it's hanging. Hang drum. Look for hang drum, one word or two words, doesn't matter, on YouTube, and you will find this amazing hang drum sound. Dance with your wand or stuff under that sound. It's very new age. It's very ah, transdimensional. Um, 
I highly recommend it, if you like it, of course, or dance to whatever music you prefer. Oh, that's actually a very great point, adding music to the equation. Yes. With grids as well, crystal grids. Yes. Yes. Uh, make up a song for every stone. It could be a very simple stone, maybe of only three notes, but make a song and give it a couple words, very simple or not simple, it's up to you. And then when you make a song, the stone keeps the song and it's getting a connection, symbolic connection to you and to everything. Yes. Thank you for that. Yes, I'm familiar with that drum that you speak of, the Hong drum, and it actually, according to Bashar, is actually mimics, closest mimics the sound of, I want to say, is it the sound of the universe? And that is a photograph, what I posted there is a photograph of that drum, and yes, it creates a very unique sound. I'd like to ask you a question. I had an idea yesterday about crystals and the vibration enhancement of water, and I was wondering, I felt as if I was being given this information that those who live by near large bodies of water, um, oceans and lakes, if they were to stand in the water with their crystals, with the intentions, would of of sending it like ripples, if you will, of intention through the water to reach farther away places in your mind across the planet. Absolutely, yes. Use your uh, water, big body of water, as an extension of your feet, and it works as an uh, amplifier of an. Extension of the antenna and amplifier. Thank you. System. Amplifier, yes, yes, thank you. That was the word I was looking for, yes. And especially pay attention to the movement. There are waves on the water which interact with you with very in, in a very gentle and loving way. You are made of water, and when you step into water, and you are made of stone as well, so stone and water and air, that borderline between stone and water and air is one of the greatest tools you have at your disposal almost everywhere. Use it. Don't hurt yourself. If the water is too cold, don't freeze yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Well, we know how much the Yael enjoy the idea of water. Mm, we do. Yeah, please continue. Any anything, yes. No one more questions, yes. With the amplifier um, crystal idea, would we be able to then uh, have the intention with any rock or crystal, with our intention to use that to amplify our communication with you and the Yayo? Forgive me, I will take a pause to, to meditate on that. Or perhaps a different suggestion of how we might um, increase our ability to contact you. Mm. Wendy, I have a stone that I use for my Essasani and Yayo connections, and I perceived it with my third eye opening up and receiving energy from it. Very good. Much like Bashar's um, crystal, contact crystal? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, so, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I can wait. Continue. I'm sorry. Okay, so 
I will give you one way. There are many ways. One way. It's very traditional. You might already know it. When you find a stone or a crystal, test it with yourself. Take it in one hand and send the energy to another hand like that and see if you can feel it on, on the other hand like a blow of air. Ooh, nice. Test it. Test it. And like sometimes it, it depends on the day and your mood but sometimes it's stronger but when you compare different crystals some resonate with you way better. So it, and it can be a simple stone but usually it's kind of like egg, it's a little sharp on one edge than another. So that's where you where you send the energy. Now, take that uh, one of many stones, and when you meditate, lay down, and you might hold the stone in your hand like that, or you might put it on your heart chakra either direction, either direction, it's up to you. I would rather maybe put it down, send an energy from the top to the bottom, but it's up to you. Or any other place, be creative. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you put it on your third eye, sometimes you put it on your sinuses. It really depends what you want to achieve. And then invite us. We are healers and one of the things we can do and enjoy to do is participate in your Reiki healing and self-healing meditation. Invite us by names or in general. Just, hello, Rojo, I am about to meditate. Come here and I invite you to join to heal me and just maybe specify specific areas which, where you want a healing to be done. And very often we would come and uh, place our hands on you and send you the energy. You would feel it in many ways, but in general your breathing just starts to be very easy and you see lots of light in your eyes and humming sound, like very low humming sound and maybe you feel a touch or you feel the vibration, it's like a vacuum cleaner vibration, like very fast, like, oh, like that. You can feel that vibration, oh, like that. So you feel it in your body, yes, and welcome it. That would be us. That's so simple. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed that permission slip. I like that a lot. You're welcome. Many, many of us are healers, and so I'm pleased to hear that the Ayel are healers and that we can bring you into our meditation healings. So I appreciate knowing that you will come and assist us. You're welcome. It's, it's known for a long time that we do that. We offer that for a long time, for many years. Uh, Keep in mind, we have the ability to multitask, so we can send our energy, our copy of ourselves in different places. We can be in many places at the same time. Yes, I understand, I, 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 I understand that. Many of you would be jealous. <laughs> Sometimes it is impolite to split, so we would be in one place, but <laughs> in other cases we split, if we, if we could. Thank you, yes, I understand the concept very well because I know that I experienced that as well. Thank you. Nice. Let's start wrapping up. Any more questions before we finish? Are there any other ways to tell that different types of entities are coming to us during meditation? Like you explained how we could tell if yeah, yells were coming during our meditation. Is there different feelings or sensations or things we could look out for from other entities and races to identify yeah. them from each other? And spirits. Yes. Yeah. I can give you just a couple of negative ones. Um, if you feel numbness, 
especially when you expect the spirits are human discarnate souls which didn't go through the normal how do you call them wandering souls wandering spirits which we didn't go on the other side those one you can sense if they attach to you you can sense them as cold and numbness they kind of you shake and your usually your back upper back becomes cold and numb um, talk to them lovingly explain to them what they are doing to you it's not healthy for you ask them to leave uh, with love uh, offer them s many of them don't understand that they are dead they just maybe want to hug you or something uh, or just w warm them up they want your energy so explain to them sometimes you can be, be a little even rough and just order them to leave because you are you have the right for your own body mm, if uh, come to other people many you know many people are mm, have energies which would spook the the ghosts uh, the dogs barking the dogs would spook the ghosts uh, loud music um, something warming up like wine and uh, and good food would get it away breathe deeply move around and you shake it out um, and another one is Zetas they are slightly negative and uh, they come as high pitch white noise uh, their presence is often sent, uh, heard as white white noise high pitch <sighs> yes appreciate that send you much love Roha. Oh, thank you much love uh, and light and nice colors of rainbow to you sunshine much love and sunshine so beautiful thank you Ooh, I love the uh, is JC around no no he's not can anyone give us a blessing for closing oh I will thank you Hamatuku aso no no akotu hasitu Piki hasano akatu hashan mehatu. Mi kasina hala ana hasutuku. Shono hakutu hasan yatu hakutu shunaha. Ma mahina no akusura hatu. Mi kasitu hasha. Yaniana hakuatu shuna yetu sula. Siatahitu. Shona hala ano akusu. Mi siataha. Kisala ha na ha ku shuna mahi lotu. Kisa ha kietu sona hotu. I hala ha ku na mahi. I kahi satahi. No sola ha kahi ta shuna hi mahi. I ya tu akusu no ha. Ma shono akusu la ha kiso. Mahi a maho na akusu na mitu. I kalutu shona hi a ya tu sunomiatuka. Kisa na hitu la ni mahu alahi iki sata ni sana wa na ni no aku tu pa hitu kusu na ha na hitu kusu na mai hita kuatu ha iki asasha ni mi na ha la ha satu kusu na mi ni na aku shata ha kusa na hi la kusu na matu piki asana hi sata kuha iwa ha shu na matu. Sikia sina, aita kusuna mitu, kohaha ina, mahala mitu kushuna. Namaste. Namaste. Do you have a, a translation? Do you have a translation to that? I'm. I have the feeling behind it, and I'm yes. trying to put it into words but it had to do with the gathering of energies and the expansions and the reflections upon one another 
and every new energy that's brought in brings us all a new awareness of who we are and those around us and allows us new perspectives and options and choices about how we can observe this now and apply it to other nows and those who we are blessed to co-create with. Something like that. Thank Beautiful. You. Any more blessings? I will reflect on what you said. I am laying down, or oh, lying down, I'm lying down in my bed. The night has come. The lights are off. I collected my stones on the lake. I have them in my palm. They are warm and smooth. I take them one by one in my feast and talk to them and sing them the evening songs. I have a cat nearby purring. I am not afraid of the dark. The ghosts are my friends. Hello, ghosts. The fairies, the elves, the spirits of nature. Hello, everybody. I don't want to sleep, so I will be with you a little longer, and I will sing you the lullaby. Good night. Thank you. Good night. That was so beautiful, and we will sing you a lullaby in return. Thank you. <sighs> Hi, Max. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for being with me all the time. Oh, with them, with Rob. It was fun. It was. Yeah, nice Thank energies. I, I'm it's getting sharper. Nice I, I understand now how Jim is happy to channel. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do hope we all find out how easy it is. Okay. <laughs> That was too late. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, let's do commercials. Um, uh, everybody knows everything. Yeah, we are humancolony.org. Um, join us, become a member, and join our Hangout chats on Google Hangouts. Connect to us and join us live next time. I plan on doing mostly maybe one in the morning, like, and one in the evening, that sort of thing. I guess Sunday morning it would be an a fixed time. I will post it. Um, and that's about it. And um, uh, thanks everybody for participation and thank you for the community for being together. We are facing possible expansion. More people will come. So structure better, connect one to one, remember names, remember faces, and chat. You know, give each other support. That would be the essential part of that. As we grow, we need to just learn each other and know each other's names and um, group together by interests. That's, um, I guess, my simple-minded um, <laughs> uh, commercial. That was lovely. Not simple at all. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good for night, Max. Thank you. We look forward to the next one. All right. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Max.